Hey everyone, this is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. Let's just get right into it today because we are joined by Barry Williams, Christopher Knight, and Mike Lookaland. Hey, David. The Brady boys are in the house, or should I say the mummies? <laughs> or the Brady Rose. <laughs> um, the mummies. Mummy how bros. That? How about that? I, I'm going to call this one of my peak uh, professional experiences. It was just great, great fun to be in that vibe, in that vibe, those people, um, the crowd, uh, the, the uh, costumes, as spectacular as they look on television, are even more spectacular in person. And putting them on was just, it was just such a gas. And they are tailored to within, you know, a nano inch of your, our, you know, of our body. So, you know, I mean, everything is right in the right place and they work, it's amazing. And it's just amazing, blown away. How did this all come about for all three of you? You know, like when it's one person, I understand, but like three people, like, you know, they're all three of you say yes to the mass Singer. Like, did one person say yes first? And did you check with each other? Did someone hold out and maybe not really want to do this as much as the others? We have a history. Barry? <laughs> um, uh, 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 first, first, uh, it was something I, I gravitated toward. Anyway, not that that would have anything to do with actually getting on the show, but um, I did. I did have a, a someone that was working on the casting side, and I made it very clear that I would uh, enjoy being on that. So that that uh, the, the idea was was uh, was tossed into the uh, pot, and uh, you know those that sit around the conference table said, mm -hmm. and then they they came up with the idea of the trio. Yeah, you need the three. Yeah, the set. and that had never been done. So it was kind of like breaking their own tradition. And so I came back to me and I, I you know, I'm both feet in on this. Let's find out if uh, Michael is available. Um, and then we'll have to go to work on Chris and try and encourage him. <laughs> David, um, I, I have been well known uh, as being a, uh, uh, having a, a difficult history with music. Not, not, it follows me and embraces me um, to my horror and has continually for the past 50 years. So uh, I am uh, more than resistant. And they knew that. Is it true that on the Brady Bunch, on those musical episodes that at times your microphone was turned off? <laughs> uh, perhaps in the live, for, uh, you know, our concerts, but uh, I, you know, when we sang the albums, it was, we didn't individually have a mic. I just knew that I was uh, asked to stand back from it a little bit or further, a, a little bit more. Gently encouraged to not, yeah. I would get these looks from Mike because he's like oh. a perfect pitch and I don't know what I'm doing. And he'd lift up his headset. If I'm standing over here, he'd go like this. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, and oh, you know, he's sorry. looking up at me. So he's like, you know, it was like, and I knew I had no talent in the area. I mean, to the point where I, I, karaoke, that, that, that would, there's no, there's, there's no, in no way would that be fun. Let me I give you me 40 a, years a, to learn happy a, birthday. Of what this is. Well, I'm glad you mentioned it. Chris and I happened to be in Chicago for a Cubs game at the same time, and which was kind of coincidental. And we were invited to go up to the booth and sing Happy birthday. Was it happy birthday or take me out to the ball game? I think we did both, but it, okay. it would, and, and, and it, happy birthday was, is what's in my mind. And, uh, <laughs> and I we, mentioned it. We, we're standing next to each other and he threw me off pitch for happy birthday. <laughs> I, oh, no. I, 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 I was like, I can't even hear the melody. <laughs> I'm a disaster when it comes to music and it's no fun for me. I know I'm a disaster. I have no business being out there and I'm part of a group. Tell me how much fun that is. So no, when they, when they know that this thing is going to come together by, you know, having to come to me, I'm, they might want to share with you what their thoughts were at that point. There is a line in the Masked Singer contract that actually says, I read it, it says, this is a real contest, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you're up there singing, you are not allowed to turn your mic. The microphone is not allowed to be turned off. 
and so, everyone. So in this case, you got Chris Knight singing the song for real. So look, the mummies might be like redemption for, you know, Peter Brady. Oh, yeah, we're going to release it. Um, <laughs> you know, Spotify, let's just see how many downloads we can get. Uh, we're going, we're taking this to the top. We're, we're mounting a tour. Uh, it's going to, it should be ready for 2023. Um, yeah, tell all your friends and buy tickets early. <laughs> the good until, thing we about run up the against, until we run up against the harp and then it's like, see ya. Yeah, no, when you're a mummy, you're reanimated for a short period of time and then it's back to your sarcophagi. <laughs> Do you guys, you know, like when I introduced you and I made the joke, you know, the Brady boys are in the house. Look, you've all done so much in your careers. Like since the Brady Bunch, you were, you know, child actors. You, you know, you have a lot of things going on outside. I mean, of the Brady Bunch and Christopher, I know you have Christopher Knight home and you guys, you have your production company. You guys have a lot going on, but does it ever get to you that then, you know, people will always, you know, you guys will always be known as, you know, Peter and Bobby and Greg, does that ever get to you? There was an awareness that I had, because you think when you leave something like the Brady Bunch, even with all the success it immediately had in syndication, that eventually it would tail off. Um, it was off the, it was off prime time by the, uh, when I was 16, um, successful through, through syndication for, uh, well, it turns out at forever, but um, I'm thinking, good, give it a, the three or four years, maybe by 20, it won't be something that will be there that um, I'm known for, you know, and that uh, will be able to get beyond it. Then about 25, it dawned on me that maybe this is never going away. That, that, and in fact, it wasn't a negative. It was sort of like, you know, Peter Brady's in every room before I get there. He's, he's in rooms I've never been in. And he's going to be around after I'm gone. So it, it's like ever present. Why try to, why fight it? You know, I mean, the fact is, is it, it has its gravity um, and it's a positive influence. So embrace it. What do you guys think it is? Because, you know, you look at like Grey's Anatomy and CSI and ER, like there are shows that are on the air for, I mean, it's, it's the exception, of course, but like 10, 15 years. Brady Bunch was, yes, there was many spinoffs and Brady Brides and the Variety Hour, but it was on the air for five years. Like that's so short in retrospect of like the legacy of what this has become. Like, what do you guys attribute? Like, what is it about this show that just is so, such a part of like pop culture? That's a really, a really difficult thing to, to accurately pin down. Um, the, the way I, I try and approach that a lot is with what people tell us. And um, I, I will say that the, 